uh, chapter that is the fluid kinematics and we told that we'll start with introduction we'll uh, talk about eulerian and lagrangian descriptions we'll talk about streamline path lines stand lines streak lines uh, are essential uh, ways to visualize the kinematics of the any fluid particle or fluid flow linear strain rates uh, shear strain rates we'll talk about vorticity circulation kinematic consideration of parallel shear and uh, vortex flows stream function and polar coordinates okay so le let us start with uh, kinematics so kinematics is a branch of mechanics that deals with the quantities involving space and time only so it treats variables such as displace displacement velocity acceleration deformation rotation of fluid elements without referring to the forces respons responsible for such a motion so we we don't care so we should only care about how we should all uh, uh, always care about the how question how fluid was moving how fluid was rotating how fluid was fluid particles were stretching all sorts of thing but we will not consider the why question why question means why it was happening so it must have been acted upon by some force so that those type of questions we will talk uh, talk in the dynamics part okay so in this chapter we will talk about the how thing only so in order to understand the kinematics of any fluid flow there are there are two disc, two, two sorts of descriptions one is lagrange description another is eulerian description okay this this dates back to 1700 or 1600 70 or 1600 so i mean people are using or uh, people uh, this researcher or uh, leonard euler has proposed this uh, these equations or the, he has proposed the eulerian description of fluid uh, particles it, it dates back to 171600s and uh, people have known since then so let's first talk about what this uh, langrangian description and what these uh, eulerian descriptions are langrangian de description is defined as in langrangian specification individual fluid parcels are followed through time it means let's suppose you are let's suppose this is a river that is flowing in this in this picture and if you want to analyze your system through lagrangian approach what you should do let's suppose this person wants to uh, measure the temperature by thermometer okay so what he will do he will he will be sitting on a boat and he will uh, put the probe on into the water and it, this guy along with the boat will also move throughout this motion of this boat okay while keeping his uh, thermometer in, intact so what is happening here essentially you what you did you pinpoint a particle let's suppose this is your particle 
okay and this particle is also flowing similar with the boat and when the particle reaches here he is still measuring the temperature of only okay so in the sense that we can see that uh, basically he is measuring the temperature of that particle at different times only right and he is not considering other partic other particles other particle temperatures okay he is missing out so in order to uh, completely specify or completely know the properties or uh, know the state of all the particles you will have n thermometers and then you can track each and every particle individually with time then you will be able to tpn t then you will be able to completely understand the flow physics or flow behavior of the of the whole whole set of fluid particles right another way of uh taking the okay be, uh, before that this uh, property temperature not only he can take uh, the measure the uh, uh, property of such as temperature but he can also measure density velocity of that particle momentum of that particle and every other uh, uh, properties is it can be scalar it can be vector it can be tensor as well second order tensor okay so another way of uh, judging this the whole scenario could be a, a a guy b let's suppose this guy b sitting at the bank of the river and putting the thermometer and at one place now you will see he he whatever he is measuring the temperature of this particular particle after time t after time t or delta t it has moved somewhere here okay and now after time t another particle would have moved over here right so every time t so every time t he is measuring properties of different particles okay so in order to completely specify this guy has to take n thermometers sticking to every particle and check for all the times what this guy has to do this guy has to also take n thermometers sitting at fixed x y z and different times right so here what he is actually doing he is just focusing on on this particular region let's suppose this region is x comma y comma z and different times so now the temperature basically he is taking the information of whole field as compared to here he is just considering or sitting over a particle so this guy is actually taking i mean in order to completely specify you need to have the temperature information at every x y z and t 
so essentially you need to have an information of whole field okay so there there are two ways it can uh, measure the properties so let's let me uh, give a statement uh, for eulerian description so this description was called eulerian description and rather than following each fluid particle we can record the evaluation of the flow property at every point in space as time varies this is eulerian description it is a field description also usually called field description so a probe is fixed in space as an example of eulerian measuring device okay so here this means that the flow properties at specified location depend on the location and on time for example density velocity pressure can be mathematically represented as so here we you are not tracking particle so what you do you have a velocity field with a function of this vector the spatial vector comma time or in scalar i mean in more precise form you have to write x comma y comma z t similarly it can be valid for uh, vector pressure as well density temperature okay, and tensors as well now what is the need why do we uh, need two description of flow field basically that should be a uh, valid question for our particular course so the reason being your newton's law are valid for lagrangian description only if i want to find the acceleration if i am putting a force m times dv by dt if i am doing so this dv by dt the change in uh, velocity with time should be of the particle unless until you are looking at the particle change velocity so this is vp basically okay this particular equation is valid only because i am talking about lagrangian description okay but here is a catch in fluid mechanics you are not going to track so this is tracking of velocity of particle of one particle i am tracking i am i am i am taking one particle and i am i am uh, I, I, so I, i thought that some force was there and uh, it has some mass so it has it has changed its velocity from 0 to vp okay so uh, i'll tell that okay fine this much is acceleration but you are looking at only one particle okay so you have to actually look for infinitely many particles that is the problem okay uh, and also f is equal to ma is valid for particles only okay it is not valid for your eulerian description your your euler euler, euler variables okay it it is valid for particles only so there is a way to connect so newton's law is valid on system of particles f is equal to m a particle only theek okay? hai but if we go by a lagrangian approach we have to keep a track of infinitely many fluid particles which is very impossible okay we cannot do that which is very computationally costly also and but but the thing is it would be easy 
okay take one particle apply force see what's happening what is the change and you can write all the equations f is equal to ma is very well valid so there is why there is a relation between this lagrangian uh, lagrangian uh, field to eulerian field okay so in eulerian field you what you have to do you just have to measure the things at different different so you have to keep a probe fixed on one place and let the particle move let the particle move move on and uh, this could be connected with lagrangian approach as well we'll see how so we describe the flow field by eulerian approach and the, and connect it with lagrangian description and this gives the onset of reynolds transport theorem and this is very strong equation reynolds transport theorem which connects your lagrangian lagrangian description to eulerian description and we will see the proof how we are going to see this so you guys might have heard that your a particle is not only uh, i mean this here a particle is not only dv by dt but it is dou v by dot e plus some additional term so this is called local derivative local derivative and this is called advection advection terms and we'll see how we will see how these things came across and together this local and advection terms are called total derivative so total derivative is basically the lagrangian thing and you are actually uh, connecting with the eulerian description and then you can apply your f is equal to ma okay so basically f is equal to ma you apply here and you take the advantage of writing v as this thing that's all and once you write this thing you take care of all the field so that is why this thing is has very strong implication while deriving the equations and uh, in future lectures we will will be more uh, talking about these things in our future uh, chapters so let us let us try to derive this particular thing how we are going to derive things uh, that eulerian versus or even to uh, lagrangian description how we are going to derive it let's suppose i have a particle sitting over here okay whose coordinate is given as xp at some time t See, this xp is as a as a vector you can write x p t comma y p t comma z p t okay in the sense that you have a coordinate system 0 comma 0 comma 0 and from here what is your position vector basically this is your position vector right nothing more than that now this particular particle will have some property f it can be temperature it can be velocity it can be anything it can be density okay now this thing uh, this variable this let's suppose this is my temperature temperature is a function of this position vector comma t we can write that now what after time t after delta time t after dt this particle has moved here in this much time somewhere okay now the your coordinate will be 
I mean now the property at this particular location would be the temperature at x p plus delta x p comma after time t you your time coordinate will move to t plus delta t okay so what is this delta xp so delta xp is what the velocity of particle velocity of particle times the dt you can write that so that is why it is substituted over here and it is written over here x plus vp dt plus t plus delta t and xp t plus vp dt this is what they have written so far i have done nothing more okay now let's see now i want to take the what is happening what is the change that is happening so the change that is happening is can be uh, told as total derivative okay total change so total change can be written as capital d your property f or temperature or anything x p this is your vector okay comma t divided by dt okay now total change change can be written as so any change so let's suppose you have a two dimension you have a function y is equal to fx so this is your fx this is your x you want to seek the change so this at x is x you have fx your x plus delta x you have f x plus delta x okay now you how did you uh, look for the uh, slope so basically this is the slope here rate uh, i mean rate change or suppose let's suppose you have okay so what is the slope over here at this particular point so slope is f dx x you can write as limit delta x tends to 0 fx plus delta x minus fx divided by x plus delta x minus x this is how you write right slope or change so this slope so there is a problem what is the problem this is one dimensional over here this is the only function of x but this is the function of x and t both so we need to take care for slopes for both x and t both okay so we'll take care of that so what is i what i will do i will do limit delta t tends to 0 or let me write the slope in terms of t t first let let me write xp let it be or whatever the change that is happening let me write it here so final function minus initial function so final function is f of xp plus vp delta t comma t plus delta t this is your final function minus initial function f of xp comma t divided by delta t this is how you are going to write the total derivative in i mean total so analogous to this thing you can write this thing okay now let's see let me write this for the time being now uh, this function i'll take not more than 5 minutes so this function i can expand this function as a taylor series expansion taylor series you guys remember so taylor series what it does so let's suppose we have a function value at fx so you want to calculate the function at x plus delta x you write fx plus delta x by 
uh, f dash x plus delta x by 2 square f double dash x and so on and you then uh, ignore the higher derivatives so similar fashion i will do the taylor series expansion of the final function in terms of the previous function that is how you do that so f so I, let me write it here xp plus vp dt t plus delta t can be written as f of xp comma t plus delta t dot fx p comma t by dot t at constant xp plus you have to do, do two times plus you have to change dx and then you have to do do fx p comma t by do x at constant t plus plus the higher order terms i will not write that okay notice that if you if you do the things in vector form so see so this x is your vector vector form no? this is your vector form so this particular thing you should replace it by del f x p comma t okay now let's substitute it over here and then let's see limit delta t tends to 0 this minus this so this minus this so this and this goes away this and this goes away okay. rest are there and you have to divide it by dt so dt goes away okay and here you have a dt right so this function i will write it So this function so now i have applied limit also and then this can be written as do f xp t by do t this function leftover function plus this function del x by del t times del f plus higher order terms hata de so this is your total derivative now it can be written so loose sense df by dt is equal to so this is what your local derivative dot f by dot t and what is this this is nothing but your velocity vp right dx by dt is again your velocity vp dot x f if i write in terms of uh, so so obviously so there are components then i mean then uh, you properly if you write you have there will be a dot sign over here if you write in terms of components you have to write dot and then that that's it so yes you are done so if i write uh, once more dot f by dot t plus vp what is your vp let's suppose i am writing in for x direction so this is your u okay and what is this dot by dot x f plus v that, that those components u v w right dot f by dot y plus w dot f by dot z and you if you you can do this particular 
use this formula by replacing this f as replacing this f with capital v and then you will be able to deduce this particular formula see this formula right so anything you can if you replace that f by this v vector it will be vector over here if you replace that by rho it will be rho over here but the thing is you got this relation now the idea is you can apply f is equal to ma here and you can replace this f by this much thing and your life will be easy okay now you are able to understand visualize the uh, overall 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 field scenario not by taking each particles counting each particles right just by doing a field variable uh, description you can actually uh, get the uh, get the idea of what your field is doing and in turn you also applied newton's first law okay so any doubt so far like because i understand that this is a bit uh, uneasy to start with but yes you go with some some of the literatures you will find it that this is the way it, it works okay. the next class i actually start talking about streamlines uh, some animation uh, some matlab coding i will also want to you guys to show the sort of animations i want you guys to yeah. so this sort of animation this is basically the path line traced by three tracer particles and which i did it in matlab and i want you guys also to start looking matlabs तो आप लोग में से किन लोगों को मैटलब आता है मैटलब पढ़े इसके पहले मैटलब नो सर ओके सो वी विल ट्राई टू लर्न थिंग्स मे बी नॉट नॉट इन वन डे बट वी वी विल लर्न ओके फाइन देन रेस्ट इज फॉर द टूमोर क्लास ओके वी कैन लीव देन सर हाँ सर द लैंग्वेज ऑफ द कुंडू एंड कोहेन इज सर वेरी डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज 